Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. I got to start off today by telling a great story. Recently, I was working with my little four-year-old now, and we decided to watch Harry Potter. And I was sitting there with my daughter as she was watching Harry Potter and that wand, and the only thing she wanted to do was to figure out what was going to happen next, especially when they got to that big, huge chessboard. And it wasn't long before I realized my kids are going to be reading soon. And what does that mean? What kind of things should I bring to them? Of course, every night when I put them to bed, we read books. They're into PJ masks now, which is kind of weird, but I like that. Today, we're going to be talking all about reading, finding the right reading materials for the right students. I look at my kids and even though they're all four years old, they're vastly different with different abilities and different levels. Should we be giving them the same book? Should I be reading with them, reading to them the same book? Our guests tonight are going to talk all about the right ways to be bringing reading and instilling the love of reading into the classroom. I want to bring on Malbert Smith, the CEO and president and co-founder of Metametrics. Malbert, how are you today? Welcome uh, to the program. I'm doing great, Jeff, and it's great to hear that you're reading with your, your children. They absolutely love it. They stall every single night and don't let me go to bed until I read at least seven or eight books. It's pretty well, awesome these days. Obviously, I'm older. I'm now getting to do that, have, have that experience with my grandchildren, <laughs> which is neat. And uh, talk to us a little bit about, you know, reading here. You you are the, the you know, the, the, the president, co-founder of Metametrics. What is Metametrics? Metametrics is an educational research organization and most people know us for the Lexile framework. And I created uh, Metametrics back in 1984. I was teaching in the University of North Carolina in the teacher education program. And really the challenge that uh, many of the teachers, same challenges we have today is, how do you support personalized and differentiated instruction? And so we went about that research and created the Lexile framework. And the Lexile framework, as you know, is a, a system in which we measure readers and text and put them on the same scale where so that we can match up students with with books and now of course when we're looking at reading research is at its core here making sure that we know who the readers are and how we can match that up i also want to bring on jeff elmore here a senior research engineer at metametrics jeff how are you today welcome to the show I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on here. Talk to us a little bit about what Metametrics is doing to make sure that teachers have the right materials for their students. Uh, sure. So, you know, really what we've done in this uh, in recent years is expanded the Lexile framework to work more effectively for early grades books. You know, this is like books in K1 and 2. And those books have some really unique characteristics like, you know, there may be a highly decodable book where someone's paid a lot of attention to making sure that all those words in that book are going to be easy to decode or like a highly patterned book. Like you can think of like Brown bear, Brown bear. What do you see? You know, and those kind of pattern books uh, and decodable books help to develop different aspects of uh, you know, the skills necessary to learn to read. So a lot of text complexity systems, including the, you know, the Lexile framework uh, historically have not taken these factors into account like decoding and uh, the patterning and stuff. So, you know, we've undertaken a, a research project with some um, really great people, Dr. Freddie Hebert and Dr. Jill Fitzgerald, which, you know, they're really the guiding forces behind this and taught me everything I know about, you know, these early reading texts. Uh, and so we've made some enhancements to take into account these unique factors in early reading text and also to honor the wide variety you know there's so many different kinds of books and kids need a lot of different kinds of books you know to learn to read so we're providing some more information to say well what about this book is difficult or what about this book is complex or what about this book is simple so it's just really expanding the mission of the lexile framework uh you know down into those early grades now, now jeff you, you can't have that there because you just had a bunch of people driving in their cars listening to this go I see a penguin looking at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times I've, I've read all of those books to my kids. I want to bring on our last guest today, a kindergarten teacher. I want to bring on Elizabeth uh, Faulkner. Elizabeth, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm good. It's really great to be here, Jeff. Thank you so much for being here. I, I love speaking with kindergarten teachers. You have a special place in this world. Talk oh, to us you. a little bit about what it's like to be a kindergarten teacher. 
Well, I mean, it's pretty much the best job in the world. So I'll start there. Um, no, I, I love teaching kindergarten. Five-year-olds and six-year-olds are just the best age group. I love the curiosity, the energy, the personality that really starts to come out with these kids. We laugh and play and sing and, and have a great time all day long. We, we have a great, great time. Now, you keep referring to them as kids. I also know that you refer to them as young readers. Talk to us a little bit about some of the activities that you do to help prepare the students for their futures in, in reading. Yeah. Um, pretty much everything that we do all day prepares them. Um, the wonderful thing is that I love being a kindergarten teacher and I love teaching these kids how to read. Um, I'm a huge bibliophile, so opening up the world of books to these kids is such a pleasure and such a joy. Um, so we do a lot of different activities. So we do segmenting games and blending games and we do alphabetic work and we do phonetic work and we do sight word work. There's so much that we integrate across the different levels that we teach. So we teach, you know, math and science and history and all the fun subjects and we get to do a lot of activities that all instill that love of reading and all of those basic phonetic instructional kind of strategies as we go. I, I, I want to just kind of pause here with everything guys. And I want to take a look at, I, I'm going to make this show about me if that's okay with everything that we're doing here with our kids. At what point can I look at my kids and say, instead of reading to them, start reading with them. And what kind of material should we be doing? Mal Malbert, what do you think? How do you, how do you pick out the, the perfect materials for somebody who's maybe a year, year and a half off? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, you move from reading to, to reading along, to reading alone. And um, for every student, that's a little bit different. Uh, some students, you can do that earlier, or some children. And as a parent, that's one of the things you have to individually adjust to uh, depending on when that child is ready to but, but as soon as they can i think it's very rewarding for the child to not just being the receptive um, uh, a person in the engagement but actually participating with the parent and 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 showing their delight and you showing that delight and them reading to you as opposed to being read to and talk to us guys a little bit about the the system here. As teacher like Elizabeth, how can she use this the, the Lexile system and and what could it do for her classroom? And then I want to bring Elizabeth back in and say what is it doing for your system? So, uh Jeff I'm Albert, I'll, I'll throw that one to you, but what what could this system be doing for Elizabeth and her students? Jeff, you want to start? Sure, here? sure. You know, and and I'll let Elizabeth I, I think speak for herself, you know. I mean, at a basic level it's about understanding that you know, you have a range of reading abilities, especially in in early grades classrooms, and you got to meet each student where they're at and give them some material that's, you know, going to be accessible and going to be something that they can have a, you know, a successful and positive experience with. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the mission of the Lexile framework generally, and I think it's the same the same story in early grades, but it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more to it, and I, I hope Liz will kind of comment on this, you know, because you need to develop all these different aspects of learning to read, decoding the words, but also understanding that you know, books are supposed to be meaningful. They're supposed to be, uh, contain meaning that you can unlock, and that's why we read. And so, you know, different sorts of books can help to develop those different skills. And so one of the things that we're, we're offering now is in addition to a, you know, a measure, we can let, you know, how much challenge is this book going to present for this reader. Uh, we also are providing these profiles that say, well, for this book, you know, it's got a really low decoding demand for so you know for someone who's uh, really just still focusing on cracking the code. You know maybe that'd be a good text for them, uh, but another book might have a, you know a different profile characteristics and be good uh, you know for someone else. So really, it's just about providing information to educators to help them match students up with a book that's going to help them uh, you know grow their reading ability. And, and Elizabeth, how has the system worked for you? Have, is this a, a new system that that you've come into recently or uh, talk to us a little bit about how you're using it in the classroom. Yeah, so I began with Lexile um, previously with tutoring experience. So I tutored a lot of students between third through sixth grade. And so I used that because I really needed to find something that would really personalize my instruction for each of those individual kids. So when the teacher gave me their Lexile score, I could immediately go onto the website and I could find a huge range of books when I type that into their wish list options um, and say, okay, like, I want to find a book that matches their interests. So I could go through and say action stories, or I could say, you know, funny stories or history stories or biographies. I could type in their Lexile code and then the kids could pick from a range of books that was already provided that would match them right where they were. 
So I didn't have to try to play the game of finding, you know, 15 different books and read with them individually and be able to figure out, okay, this one's too hard, this one's not good enough, this one's too easy, this one doesn't really have any vocab that I really want to stress and work on, this doesn't have high comprehension, it doesn't have inferencing. So the great thing is now that K2 has rolled out, being in my classroom, I can use it a lot more directly with my K students because I can really help to kind of sift through the difficulty of finding kind of a way to level all my texts. Um, so like Malbert and Jeff said, it's true that we need a huge variety of texts from high vocab texts to the decodables to the pattern books. And so as you can tell, I have a couple examples here of, you know, books that claim to be on a level one level versus another series that claim to be on a level one level. And there's a huge range, right? And so teachers have to consistently go through this process of, well, what is a level one and what is a level A? And for kids who are starting at level one or ending at level two, you know, where, where are we going to find this personalized instruction for these kids? Where are we going to meet them exactly where they need to be met? Um, and this new, you know, K2 extension to their measures has been fantastic. So I've used it for my library. So I've been able to mark the books with little stickers in the corners so my kids know, you know, they're roughly at like a red level book or a green level book or a purple level book, depending on where they match their Lexile scoring. Um, I can also use it to say, okay, like if they really need to focus on a particular set of like pattern books, they can go and get a green set of books. And so they know they can go to that and they can use it. Or if it has, you know, the purple sticker on it, it's something that's a little bit more difficulty in their sentence structure. So I want to kind of break them out of the habits of the pattern books. I want to see them using that higher vocabulary, higher fluency, higher decoding, um, where they can't be as predictable. Um, and the kids are so different that it's great to be able to really personalize that instruction for where they need. So if I'm right about this, Alexia number is between 200 and 1700. Is that about right, Albert? Yeah, that's the typical range uh, that you'll find most texts, especially texts uh, from about the second grade up to through college and, and graduate school. And, and it goes up higher, but that's typically where you get the majority of text falling within that span. And are we... And this is this is kind of new. And I, I, you know, as a music teacher, these are these are still kind of new things here. Are do we say that as a high school graduate, they should be at a, at a thousand, at eleven hundred, or what? What is the average Lexia score for the average high school senior? Right. Uh, the college and career readiness zone. That is, if when students graduate from high school, we want them prepared for the rigors of uh, reading demands for uh, uh, everything in the post secondary world, which is college, community colleges, junior colleges and the world of work. And typically where you find the Lexile range for that is between 1,200 and 1,400 Lexiles. There are certain professions that are much higher in terms of the reading demands. An attorney, for example, uh, will often have to read at a much higher level. But in general, you'll find that most adult literacy requirements are between 12 and 1,400 Lexiles. Interesting. Um, I didn't know that. I will be honest with you about that. Um, if a teacher's out there listening to this show and, and wants to learn more about this, where do they go? Is this a system that they can go to your website and sign up for? Is this something that they have to go and, you know, maybe a school district um, purchases the system? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, everything on our website is free. Uh, teachers, we actually have uh, traffic on our website every day from uh, almost uh, over 100 countries a day, uh, educators come to our website. And again, everything on our website is free. Uh, we don't sell anything. We don't sell a test. We don't sell books. What we created, as I mentioned earlier, being a research organization, is a scale, the Lexile scale. And as Liz was talking about, she gets test scores from a test publisher. It could be Scholastic. It could be Renaissance Learning. It could be ETS. Uh, in the fact, uh, almost 20 states report out Lexile measures on their statewide assessment that's given to all students in grades three through eight. And so we don't sell any tests. We don't sell any uh, uh, books. What, but what we do is we license our technology to publishers. And so most classrooms are getting Lexile related product through one of uh, over 100 uh, partners that we have, such as Scholastic or Renaissance Learning um, or uh, Achieve 3000. There are a number of those. Um, so everything on our website is a resource to the teachers and they can and, and can access anything from find from looking for books to vocabulary lists to things like that. And, and Elizabeth, as far as your students, because they are kindergartners, um, and again, this is just a world that's still new to me. Do you grade them on their uh, how, 
what is the process? Because I, I, I don't even know this one yet. But what is the process for determining a student's Lexile number? Yeah, um, so the process that I mostly use is I go through and we use um, our reading program. And so we go through and I just kind of approximate based on where we are in the reading program and kind of how it's matching certain texts. So as the BR levels start to get rolled out, I'll become more comfortable with kind of where those levels are going to place depending on text complexity. So as those kind of roll out, we'll start getting used to that a little bit more. And I think we'll get better at being able to just look at a text and say, okay, like that's ish a BR 200 or ish that's a BR 300 and be able to kind of level it that way. But the website also has a great feature where you can type in a selection from a book and then that will go ahead and rate it for you. And so that's going to really help me get used to the process of how to kind of start to level those books as my kids start to use them. It, it seems like you're getting a lot out of the system. How do you see your students progress throughout the year by having the Lexile numbers and by using the system? Yeah, um, so from week to week, they're making these huge leaps and bounds. I mean, the kids from the beginning of this week are reading on a totally different level than my kids are reading at the end of the week. They grow so fast, and it's incredible to see how quickly these kids pick up everything that's around them, especially reading instruction. So we do a lot of really direct phonics instruction. So these kids are going through these books like crazy. So from the early decodables, I have my whole kit from September that's out, and they start going through those early decodables and things like that. And then as the year goes on and that phonetic instruction deepens and their sight word instruction deepens, I can start taking those next levels of books out. And so I definitely foresee using this to help me kind of make those groupings of books that I can take out as the year progresses. Um, but my favorite is the take home feature. So with parents, I think that can be really overwhelming. Like, what is an A? And how do I go to a bookstore and find an A book? And what does that look like? Um, and as Malbert was mentioning with Scholastic, so if you go through and if your school offers the Scholastic magazines, you can go on the bottom and it gives you a range of, you know, A to B, like they'll pick a particular novel and it'll say it's a B or it's a Lexile score, such and such. And so I really highlight that for my parents and say, you know, hey, this would be a really great resource for you to be able to find a book that really matches their challenge level for their reading. Here's the score that you can take home with you. And then as you're going through the magazine, you can help find books that approximately match it. And I think as the parents get more used to that and get more comfortable with the Lexile system, they then get the confidence to be able to take that home to the bookstore or to other locations and say, oh, like that's about where my child is or so. So I think it's just a tool to help translate what's happening in the classroom to then how they can kind of help their kids at home and really help them match that specific challenge point for their child. Malbert, it's great watching Elizabeth smile and light up when she's talking about her kids and how wonderful they're doing and progress throughout the year. One of the things I'm curious about is what kind of feedback are you getting from teachers and school districts who are currently using your system? Yeah, we're getting a lot of uh, positive feedback in that every school and every teacher um, in every state that I've been in is talking about the importance of, of getting all students on a growth trajectory for college and career readiness. And most states, districts, and schools use the Lexile framework to denominate that growth. So it's used as a growth indicator. And if I could punctuate a point that Liz made just a few minutes ago, there's so much growth that takes place in that pre-K through grade three. Uh, in fact, some reading researchers will argue up to two thirds of the growth in reading over the lifespan of a reader takes place from birth through second grade. So obviously it's very important that we match students and optimally so that they get the proper amount of challenge, but not so much challenge that they're frustrated. And so teachers really use this as a yardstick for college and career readiness. And are they on the growth trajectory by grade level for college and career readiness? So with all that being said here, guys, at what time should I give my little four-year-old daughter Harry Potter to read? <laughs> well, it's there's... It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such, it is a great book, and all three of my children loved Harry Potter. And what was interesting, all three of my children were not... Um, they had different growth trajectories. And I remember that my son, who wanted to read it fairly early, uh, but couldn't really handle it, and back at the time, now this is, I was, um, I have grandchildren now, so all of you are much younger with your children. But at, at the time, uh, one of the things we were able to do is get the books on tape so we could listen to it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a very big believer in that we need to surround our children as early as possible with the richness of our language. And that's a great book. And so he listened uh, on books on tape before he could ever read and then read it later. 
I think that's a great idea. I should uh, let's see if I can get some Dr. Seuss books on tape as we go through here. Um, and I would I would add too, Jeff, that you you mentioned that you know that's part of your bedtime routine, right? And and that was I became a huge lover of books. I think from my father and mother who had books everywhere in the house. And my favorite, my favorite, favorite memories from growing up were when my dad would sit in bed with us and he would do all the voices and all the crazy additions when he was reading. And we read really high chapter books, but it was his way of kind of showing me what I was getting into of, you know, what if I became a good reader and I worked at it and I practiced of what I could grow into and the kind of exciting adventures that I could participate in. So I think that's a huge part. And I think that's really great that you do that with your girls to be able to kind of instill that love of reading and to show them how to read and how to go through that and fluency and adding voices. I think that really adds to their, to their growth in reading as they get older. I, I, I was going to say the same thing, which is that, you know, my mom read books to us, you know, we well into our, my teen years, you know, it's not, it's not something where you have to transition from reading books to your kids to them mm -hmm. only reading books. Both of those things are great, you know, all kinds of language exposure and especially reading books to your kids, you can read books that are more difficult, you know, that they, are, they couldn't read on their own. And you're still exposing them to the, all that vocabulary, those sentence structures, and just the act of here's how you read, here's what, how you should do it, and here's the intonations and all that stuff. So that, you know, that's something that never goes away as a, you know, a valuable thing to do with your kids. And that's why I love doing these podcasts. Uh, Malbert, where, where do you see the future of everything here? I, I know we had talked before the show started that, you know, maybe we'll catch up uh, in Chicago at ISTE this uh, coming summer. Where does this system go? What can we expect from, uh, from you guys in the future here? Well, I'm really excited. In addition to the research we've uh, launched five years ago on the BR uh, that Jeff had headed up for us, we now have a huge uh, campaign on vocabulary and uh, really doing some interesting work there. And I think we're going to be bringing to the marketplace, to our partners, a lot of vocabulary resources. Um, if you look, one of the, uh, the longest uh, incontrovertible facts uh, goes back to 1988 uh, when uh, uh, research that was done by Betty Hart and Todd Risley is what's called the 30, word million, 30 million word gap between our low income kids and uh, our kids and your kids. And so one of the things I'm committed to uh, in the final chapter of my, my, in my life here is really bringing the best resources we can in terms of vocabulary, because I often find when I look across the classrooms across America, typically uh, kids get the phonemic awareness, they get the phonics, the coding, but then they get about the fourth grade and it really becomes a shortage of vocabulary words and having the adequate academic words. So that's one of the things we're really going to be focused on a lot in the next five years at Metametrics. That's pretty cool. And uh, Elizabeth, what are you looking forward to in the next five years? From the company? Oh, from your kids? From your In life from my kids? Yeah. Oh, uh, I love watching them grow up. No, I uh, run a science team here at school, so I love kind of starting them off in their educational career and then getting to take them back when they get to be on our science team as they get into third through sixth grade. Um, no, but I, I love to watch how my kids grow, and I love to see how they change and the things they start to get interested in and the books they pick up. They know they can always come into my room and share the novels that they're starting to get into and the chapter books, and they come back and say, you know, oh, we started this in kindergarten, and look what we're reading now. So I, I love to see how they grow, and I love to see how their interests kind of, how they grow and change as they get older and the kinds of books that they like to pick up and how that kind of pushes them on as they get older. That's pretty awesome. That's why I like going into uh, different kindergarten classrooms and working with everybody. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and sharing your passions with us. Uh, Malbert, where do we learn more information about uh, all the great stuff happening? Uh, you can go to our website at lexile.com. You can also, we have a, a Facebook account. We have a Twitter account. That's Metametrics uh, underscore Inc. And everything, as I said earlier, all the tools and resources are free for educators. So um, we like to see a lot of teachers come to our site. Thank you guys so much. Jeff, where can we learn more about uh, you? Do you have a, a Twitter or a Facebook or something for yourself that maybe we can reach out? Uh, I would say just the, the Lexile website. I've written some blogs and uh, published some um, you know, research white papers and things like that. So uh, check, out, check out the research section on Lexile.com if you want to see some more of my stuff. Awesome. And Elizabeth, where do we learn more about the great stuff happening in your neighborhood in kindergarten? Yeah, I'm just jumping into Twitter so you can find me at Kinder K Cubs. 
Excellent. And of course, thank you guys out there for checking out TeacherCast and making it the home for your professional development. Lots of great things happening here as we turn the calendar to 2018. Brand new website, brand new stuff happening here. Stick around with TeacherCast. We hope you're having a good time this school year. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.